With the Furutaka class designed to counter the Hawkins and Omaha classes in the other two large navies, the Imperial Japanese Navy suddenly found that the Washington Treaty had not only imposed an 8-inch limit on cruiser gun calibre, but it had also imposed a maximum of 10,000 ton per hull displacement limit. Naturally, of course, this meant everyone immediately started building designs that pushed this limit to the absolute max, but at first, at least in the Japanese Navy, the plan was to build a slightly modified pair of Furutakas, which would become the Albers, and a separate unit of four 10,000-ton ships. This was because Japanese cruiser squadrons came in sets of four, and they wanted the Albers to roughly be comparable and compatible with the Furutakas. Initially, the 10,000-ton vessels were planned as having eight main guns in four twin turrets, with three of the twin turrets mounted forward and one aft, along with eight fixed torpedo launchers. But Admiral Hiraga, in charge of the ship's design at this st stage, thought that torpedoes were dangerous on a ship of this type and submitted a counter-proposal for a ship that had ten guns by adding a super-firing turret aft, but had no torpedoes. The Japanese Navy's board objected, but Hiraga stuck to his guns quite literally, and the ships were duly ordered to his design. But then he went abroad for study and research, and Admiral Fujimoto took over. He was pressured into bringing back the torpedo launchers, first in the form of four fixed twin launchers, and then as the ships were under construction, these were changed to fixed triple launchers for 12 total tubes, six per side. Since little else was changed about Hiraga's design, this eight into crew habitation space a fair bit, especially once it was decided that they should also try and carry reloads for each tube. Along with the heaviest armament of any first generation treaty cruiser, the Pensacolas had the same number of guns but no torpedoes, and the counties had torpedoes but not as many and too fewer guns, the Japanese Navy also aimed for the highest speed, requesting 35.5 knots to come from no less than 130,000 shaft horsepower. That's only 14,000 less than the total power which was propelling the battlecruiser HMS Hood, which was over four times this ship's proposed displacement. Armour was also designed to be competitive, with a 4-inch belt and a 1.4-inch deck being roughly on a par with her competitors. But inevitably, all these demands meant something had to give and that was mainly displacement, which ballooned rapidly to somewhere between 11,500 and 13,500 tonnes standard, depending on your source, but either way, the ships were massively over the Washington Naval Treaty limits. Turret armour was also quite thin. At only an inch thick, it was essentially splinter-proof plating and nothing else, although that particular design feature wasn't entirely out of step for early cruisers in the treaty period. A secondary battery of six single 4.7-inch dual-purpose guns and a couple of machine guns rounded everything out. Their capabilities immediately caused suspicion that they were overweight, but without any direct proof, there was little that anyone else could do about it. During the interwar period, two upgrade programs were launched. In the mid-1930s, the main battery had all the guns replaced with upgraded models, and the 4.7-inch guns were replaced by four twin 5-inch dual-purpose weapons. The fixed torpedo tubes were replaced with a pair of rotatable quadruple launchers, and the single aircraft catapult was replaced with a more extensive aircraft facility that had three float planes. And then at the end of the 1930s, an additional pair of quadruple torpedo launchers and some 25mm anti-aircraft guns were added. All of these changes resulted in the relatively slim anti-torpedo bulges being enlarged to maintain a modicum of stability, which in turn dropped the ship's speed by a between a knot and or two knots, depending on the ship in question. Four ships were built, Miyoko, Nachi, Haguro and Ashigara, laid down in late 1924 and early 1925. They all commissioned within ten months of each other over late 1928 and early to mid-1929. Despite being older ships, and being quite active on the front lines, the class had unusually long lives for Japanese cruisers. The first vessel wasn't sunk until November 1944, when Nachi was caught to anchor undergoing repairs by aircraft from the Essex-class USS Lexington, 
Then it would be another seven months before Haguro was stalked and destroyed by the Royal Navy's 26th Destroyer Flotilla in May 1945 while she was sailing in the Malacca Straits. And the next month, Ashigara was claimed by the submarine HMS Trenchant. And Miyoko herself managed to achieve a rare fate for Japanese cruisers. She survived the war, having been hit by an air launch torpedo at the Battle of the Sibuyan Sea, and then on her way home for repairs by another torpedo from the USS Burgle. She was towed to Singapore and sat out the rest of the war as a floating anti-aircraft battery, surrendering to Royal Navy units at the end of the war and then being scuttled in 1946. During their wartime careers, the ships had fought at the battles of Java Sea, Coral Sea, Midway, Guadalcanal, several, Philippine Sea, Leyte Gulf, and several other areas, but had almost managed to hold out until the very last. By contrast, the Takao, Mogami, and Tone classes were all down to one representative of each type before Nachi was lost. The last Megami at that point on only had weeks to live, and Tone would be sunk in 1945, which would leave only Takao, also damaged in the run-up to Leyte Gulf, moored alongside Miyoko as the only other surviving Japanese heavy cruiser. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.